Every year, the holidays come around at the same time, but unexpected costs can catch you and your wallet by surprise. By making a holiday budget, you can turn those unexpected costs into costs you already knew about. It can also give you a solid start by saving you a lot of time and stress, and it can also keep you from having a debt hangover in the new year. Holiday costs can add up quickly. The National Retail Federation says that over the past five years, Americans have spent an average of $641 on holiday gifts, $224 on non-gift items like food and decorations, and $139 on other non-gift purchases. There's an average of about $1,000 for holiday shopping. Hello and welcome to Pro Finance. Pro Finance talks about personal finance. That covers managing your money as well as saving and investing. This channel focuses on strategies to help you find more great deals than you can handle, waste less time and money, avoid unnecessary risks, and reach your dream life faster. Today we're going to talk about how to build a holiday budget that works every year. But before we start our counting, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon as well. So let's get started. Number one. Start planning early. Setting your priorities early can help you make sure that your daily budget doesn't cut back on things you need. Bruce McClary, senior vice president of the memberships and communications at the National Foundation for Credit Counseling, says, "You can't risk your future financial stability in those areas by partying and living it up during the holidays this year." There are many reasons to start saving for the holidays early. You will have more choices about how much you need to save each week or month. If your budget is already tight, saving smaller amounts over a longer time can help you reach your goal. You can also take better advantage of sales throughout the year if you start early, and you won't have to fight crowds on the Black Friday and get the things you want. With more time to look around, you can watch secondhand markets for good toys or other items. There will also be less competition, and you won't feel like you must buy something because time is running out. Number two, create holiday spending categories. Creating holiday spending categories in your budget that can be reused from year to year will help you better prioritize how you spend your money and make it easier for you to prepare. Here are some common ways to spend money throughout the holiday season. Number three, gifts. During the holidays, people give to others, even though it can be hard. Your first step should be to narrow down your list of gifts. Your budget for gifts should also include the cost of wrapping paper and shipping for any gifts that need to be sent by mail. Gifts are likely to take up a big chunk of your holiday budget, so finding ways to save can give you some breathing room. If you want to give something meaningful to your neighbors, teachers, and other people in your community. Think about making your own gifts with supplies you can buy in bulk. You can cut down on the number of gifts you need to buy by having friends and family draw names for gifts. You can also save money by sticking to a gift list with price limits for each person. Cashing in credit card rewards or points, or paying with unused gift cards you have been saving. Number four, holiday travel. Many people take trips over the holiday season to visit relatives and friends who do not reside near them. Make sure you budget enough money for things like meals, gas or tolls, airfare and back costs, hotel accommodation and food while you are traveling. If you are gonna be traveling to your location, you will need to figure out how to transport gifts there and back again. You might bring an additional、uh, duffel bag to check or send the presents back to the house via mail. In either case, an additional line item would have to be included in the budget that you create. Number five, food and entertainment. Your grocery bill might be higher than usual because you are having more parties and backing more food than usual. There are also lots of fun things to do during the holiday season. Tickets to see. The Nutcracker Ballet or photos with Santa, for example, could be added to the cost of entertainment. If you tend to spend too much on other things, you might be able to save money on entertainment. 
You don't have to pay anything to look at the holiday decorations in your town. Take part in a community menorah lighting or have a movie night at home. Number six, holiday decor and attire. Things that fall under the category include the price that you pay for your annual Christmas tree, as well as the clothes that you wear to parties. It's possible that you will need to allocate a little bit more money to this area to realize your goals of modernizing your home decor or expanding your wardrobe. This is especially important to keep in mind if your children have gone through significant growth since last year and no longer fit into their holiday attire. Number seven, charitable donations and tips. It's likely that you'll encounter people begging for donations over the holiday season because. Nonprofits and charities ramp up their fundraising efforts during this time of the year. When there are many ways to donate to charity, it's important to establish from the beginning how your charitable contributions will fit into your financial plan. This will help you stay on target. Tipping those who do work for you is another pleasant thing to do, especially if you see them frequently, such as doorman, nanny, or mail delivery. This is especially true if the person does labor for you frequently. Number eight, determine how much to save for each category. Here's the thing about making a holiday budget that can be used again, depending on your situation. Not all categories will need to be funded the same way every year or even at all. Maybe you only go to your in-laws for the holidays. Every other year, so you don't need to put any money in the travel category this year. If you don't want to go into debt, you might have to cut down on your gift list because of an unexpected home repair. But keeping the categories as a reminder of possible costs would help you every time you look at your holiday budget. Let your circumstances and priorities influence your budget. If you want to make a budget that goes beyond the holidays. You might want to try a 50-30-20 budget. This budget divides your take-home pay into what you need: 50% what you want, 30% what you need to pay off debt or save 20%. Number nine, relieve of the last year's spending. If you're still not sure how much money to put into each category, look at how much you spent on each last year. Check your bank and credit card statements to find out. Where your money went? Were you pleased with what you spent? Were there any costs that you didn't expect? If so, those numbers could give us a good idea of how to move forward. If you spend more than you should have, now is the time to make things right by making a budget you can stick to. Number ten, fund your budget and save over time. Now that you have set up your budget categories and decided how much you want to save. It's time to put money into your budget and find a place to keep your savings, so you can keep track of your progress. Number eleven, set up a sinking fund. A sinking fund is a way to save up for planned expenses over time in small amounts. This is a great way to keep track of your holiday spending, because the holidays always happen at the same time, and you can see how far you come. You can either set a deadline to reach your savings goal. Or use your sinking fund to pay for things like holiday gifts as you buy them throughout the year. Number twelve, put your money in a high yield savings account. A high yield savings account is one of the best places to put your holiday savings. This separate account keeps the money out of your personal savings, where it might be easy to spend it on something else. If you put your money somewhere safe, it will continue to grow as interest is added to it. McClary says that a high yield savings account is a great way to make it a habit to save for the holiday and to move the money you're saving into an account that may give you a little bit more when it's time to take the money out and use it. So that's it for today. We hope you found our video interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with others. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel for weekly videos. Geared to help you succeed in building wealth and achieving financial freedom. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new uploads. In the end, thanks for watching and see you next time.